Louis Napoleon Bonaparte was the only president of the French Second Republic and, as Napoleon III, the emperor of the Second French Empire. He was the nephew and heir of Napoleon I. He was the first president of France to be elected by a direct popular vote, when he was blocked by the Constitution and Parliament from running for a second term. He organized a coup d'état in 1851, and then took the throne as Napoleon III on 2 December 1852, the 48th anniversary of Napoleon I's coronation. He remains the longest-serving French head of state since the French Revolution. During the first years of the empire, Napoleon's government imposed censorship and harsh repressive measures against his opponents. Some 6,000 were imprisoned or sent to penal colonies until 1859. Thousands more, including Victor Hugo, went into voluntary exile abroad. From 1862 onwards he relaxed government censorship, and his regime came to be known as the Liberal Empire. Many of his opponents returned to France and became members of the National Assembly. Napoleon III is best known today for his grand reconstruction of Paris, carried out by his prefect of the Seine Baron Haussmann. He launched similar public works projects in Marseille, Lyon and other French cities. Napoleon III modernized the French banking system, greatly expanded and consolidated the French railway system, and made the French merchant marine the second largest in the world. He promoted the building of the Suez Canal, and established modern agriculture, which ended famines in France and made France an agricultural exporter. He negotiated the 1860 Cobden Chevalier Free Trade Agreement with Britain, and similar agreements with France's other European trading partners. Social reforms included giving French workers the right to strike and the right to organize. Women's education greatly expanded, as did the list of required subjects in public schools. In foreign policy, Napoleon III aimed to reassert French influence in Europe and around the world. He was a supporter of popular sovereignty, and of nationalism. In Europe, he allied with Britain and defeated Russia in the Crimean War. His regime assisted Italian unification, and in doing so annexed Savoy and the county of Nice de France. At the same time his forces defended the Papal States against annexation by Italy. Napoleon doubled the area of the French overseas empire in Asia, the Pacific and Africa. On the other hand, his army's intervention in Mexico, which aimed to create a second Mexican empire under French protection, ended in failure. Beginning in 1866 Napoleon had to face the mounting power of Prussia, as Chancellor Otto von Bismarck sought German unification under Prussian leadership. In July 1870 Napoleon entered the Franco-Prussian War without allies and with inferior military forces. The French army was rapidly defeated and Napoleon III was captured at the Battle of Sedan. The French Third Republic was proclaimed in Paris, and Napoleon went into exile in England, where he died in 1873. Origin Charles Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, later known as Louis Napoleon and then Napoleon III, was born in Paris on the night of 2021 April 1808. His father was Louis Bonaparte, the younger brother of Napoleon Bonaparte, who made Louis the King of Holland from 1806 until 1810. His mother was Hortense de Buhamise, the daughter by the first marriage of Napoleon's wife Josephine de Buhamise. As Empress, Josephine proposed the marriage as a way to produce an heir for the Emperor, who agreed, as Josephine was by then infertile. Louis married Hortense when he was 24 and she was 19. They had a difficult relationship, and only lived together for brief periods. Their first son died in 1807, and, though separated, they decided to have a third. They resumed their marriage for a brief time in Toulouse in July 1807, and Louis was born, premature, two weeks short of nine months. Louis Napoleon's enemies, including Victor Hugo, spread the gossip that he was the child of a different man. But most historians agree today that he was the legitimate son of Louis Bonaparte. 
Charles Louis was baptized at the Palace of Fontainebleau on 5 November 1810, with the Emperor Napoleon serving as his godfather, and the Empress Marie Louise as his godmother. His father, once again separated from Hortense, stayed away. At the age of seven, Louis Napoleon visited his uncle at the Tuileries Palace in Paris. His uncle held him up to the window to see the soldiers parading in the courtyard of the carousel below. He last saw his uncle with the family at the Chateau de Malmaison shortly before Napoleon departed for Waterloo. After the defeat of Napoleon at Waterloo and the Bourbon restoration of monarchy in France, all members of the Bonaparte dynasty were forced into exile. Hortense and Louis Napoleon moved from Aix to Bern to Baden, and finally to a lakeside house at Arenenburg in the Swiss canton of Thurgau. He received some of his education in Germany at the gymnasium school at Augsburg, Bavaria. As a result, for the rest of his life his French had a slight but noticeable German accent. His tutor at home was Philippe Labar, an ardent Republican and the son of a revolutionary and close friend of Robespierre. Labar taught him French history and radical politics. Louis Bonaparte, the younger brother of Napoleon Bonaparte, the King of Holland, and father of Napoleon III. Hortense de Buhamise, the mother of Napoleon III, in 1808, the year Napoleon III was born. The lakeside house at Arenenburg, Switzerland, where Napoleon III spent much of his youth in exile. Romantic Revolutionary when Louis Napoleon was 15, Hortense moved to Rome, where the Bonaparte had a villa. He passed his time learning Italian, exploring the ancient ruins, and learning the arts of seduction and romantic affairs, which he used often in his later life. He became friends with the French ambassador, François-René Chateaubriand, the father of Romanticism in French literature, with whom he remained in contact for many years. He was reunited with his older brother Napoleon Louis, and together they became involved with the Carbonari, secret revolutionary societies fighting Austria's domination of northern Italy. In the spring of 1831, when he was 23, the Austrian and papal governments launched an offensive against the Carbonari, and the two brothers, wanted by the police, were forced to flee. During their flight Napoleon Lewis contracted measles and, on 17 March 1831, died in his brother's arms. Hortense joined her son and together they evaded the police and Austrian army and finally reached the French border. Hortense and Louis Napoleon travelled incognito to Paris, where the old regime had just fallen and had been replaced by the more liberal regime of King Louis-Philippe I. They arrived in Paris on 23 April 1831, and took up residence under the name of Hamilton in the Hotel du Holland on Place Vendôme. Hortense wrote an appeal to the king, asking to stay in France, and Louis Napoleon offered to volunteer as an ordinary soldier in the French army. The new king agreed to meet secretly with Hortense. Louis Napoleon had a fever and did not join him. The king finally agreed that Hortense and Louis Napoleon could stay in Paris as long as their stay was brief and incognito. Louis Napoleon was told that he could join the French army if he would simply change his name, something he indignantly refused to do. Hortense and Louis Napoleon remained in Paris until 5 May, the 10th anniversary of the death of Napoleon Bonaparte. The presence of Hortense and Louis Napoleon in the Hotel U had become known, and a public demonstration of mourning for the Emperor took place on Place Vendôme in front of their hotel. The same day, Hortense and Louis Napoleon were ordered to leave Paris. They went to Britain briefly, and then back into exile in Switzerland. Bonaparte's succession and philosophy of Bonapartism Ever since the fall of Napoleon in 1815, a Bonapartist movement existed in France, hoping to return a Bonaparte to the throne. According to the law of succession established by Napoleon I, the claim passed first to his son 
who at birth had been given the title King of Rome by his father. Known by Bonapartists as Napoleon II, he was living under virtual imprisonment at the court of Vienna under the name Duke of Reichstadt. Next in line was Napoleon I's eldest brother Joseph Bonaparte, followed by Louis Bonaparte. But neither Joseph nor Louis had any interest in re-entering public life. When the Duke of Reichstadt died in 1831, Louis Napoleon became the heir of the dynasty and the leader of the Bonaparte cause. In exile with his mother in Switzerland, he enrolled in the Swiss Army, trained to become an officer, and wrote a manual of artillery. His uncle Napoleon Bonaparte had become famous as an artillery officer. He also began writing about his political philosophy. In 1833, at the age of 25, he published his Reveries Politiques, or Political Dreams followed in 1834 by Considerations Politique Say Militaires sur la Suisse, followed in 1839 by Les Idées Acutes Napoléoniennes, a compendium of his political ideas, which was published in three editions and eventually translated in six languages. His doctrine was based upon two ideas, universal suffrage and the primacy of the national interest. He called for a monarchy which procures the advantages of the republic without the inconveniences, a regime strong without despotism, free without anarchy, independent without conquest, fail coup, and exile in London. I believe, Louis Napoleon wrote, that from time to time, men are created whom I call volunteers of providence, in whose hands are placed the destiny of their countries. I believe I am one of those men. If I am wrong, I can perish uselessly. If I am right, then Providence will put me into a position to fulfill my mission. He had seen the popular enthusiasm for Napoleon Bonaparte when he was in Paris, and he was convinced that, if he marched to Paris, as Napoleon Bonaparte had done in 1815 during the 100 days, France would rise up and join him. He began to plan a coup against King Louis-Philippe. He planned for his uprising to begin in Strasbourg. The colonel of a regiment was brought over to the cause. On 29 October 1836, Louis Napoleon arrived in Strasbourg, in the uniform of an officer of artillery, and rallied the regiment to his side. The prefecture was seized, and the prefect arrested. Unfortunately for Louis Napoleon, the general commanding the garrison escaped and called in a loyal regiment, which surrounded the mutineers. The mutineers surrendered and Louis Napoleon fled back to Switzerland. Louis Philippe demanded that the Swiss government return Louis Napoleon to France, but the Swiss pointed out that he was a Swiss citizen, and refused to hand him over. Louis Philippe responded by sending an army to the Swiss border. Louis Napoleon thanked his Swiss hosts, and voluntarily left the country. The other mutineers were put on trial in Alsace, and were all acquitted. Louis Napoleon travelled first to London, then to Brazil, and then to New York. He moved into a hotel, where he met the elite of New York society, and the writer Washington Irving. While he was travelling to see more of the United States, he received word that his mother was very ill. He hurried as quickly as he could back to Switzerland. He reached Arenenberg in time to be with his mother on 5 October 1837, when she died. She was finally buried in Roy, in France, next to her mother, on the 11th of January 1838, but Louis Napoleon could not attend, because he was not allowed in France. Louis Napoleon returned to London for a new period of exile in October 1838. He had inherited a large fortune from his mother, and took a house with 17 servants and several of his old friends and fellow conspirators. He was received by London society and met the political and scientific leaders of the day, including Benjamin Disraeli and Michael Faraday. He also did considerable research into the economy of Britain. He strolled in Hyde Park, which he later used as a model when he created the Bois de Boulogne in Paris. 
Second coup, prison, escape and exile. Living in the comfort of London, he had not given up the dream of returning to France to complete his destiny. In the summer of 1840 he bought weapons and uniforms and had proclamations printed, gathered a contingent of about 60 armed men, hired a ship called the Edinburgh Castle, and on 6 August 1840, sailed across the Channel to the port of Boulogne. The attempted coup turned into an even greater fiasco than Strasbourg mutiny. The mutineers were stopped by the customs agents, the soldiers of the garrison refused to join, the mutineers were surrounded on the beach, one was killed and the others arrested. Both the British and French press heaped ridicule on Louis Napoleon and his plot. The newspaper Le Journal des Debats wrote, This surpasses comedy. One doesn't kill crazy people, one just locks them up. He was put on trial, where, despite an eloquent defense of his cause, he was sentenced to life in prison in the fortress of Ham in the Somme department of northern France. The register of the fortress Ham for 7 October 1840 contained a concise description of the new prisoner. Age, 32 years. Height, 1 meter 66. Hair and eyebrows. Chestnut, eyes, grey and small, nose, large, mouth, ordinary, beard, brown, moustache, blonde, chin, pointed, face, oval, complexion, pale, head, sunken in his shoulders, and large shoulders, back, bent, lips, thick. He had a mistress, a young woman from the nearby town named Eleanor Vujou, who gave birth to two of his children. While in prison, he wrote poems, political essays, and articles on diverse topics. He contributed articles to regional newspapers and magazines in towns all over France, becoming quite well known as a writer. His most famous book was El Extinction du Pauperism, a study of the causes of poverty in the French industrial working class, with proposals to eliminate it. His conclusion the working class has nothing, it is necessary to give them ownership. They have no other wealth than their own labor. It is necessary to give them work that will benefit all, they are without organization and without connections, without rights and without a future. It is necessary to give them rights and a future and to raise them in their own eyes by association, education, and discipline, he proposed various practical ideas for creating a banking and savings system that would provide credit to the working class, and to establish agricultural colonies similar to the kibbutzes later founded in Israel. This book was widely reprinted and circulated in France, and played an important part in his future electoral success. He was busy in prison, but also unhappy and impatient. He was aware that the popularity of Napoleon Bonaparte was steadily increasing in France. The emperor was the subject of heroic poems, books and plays. Huge crowds had gathered in Paris on 15 December 1840 when the ashes of Napoleon Bonaparte were returned with great ceremony to Paris and handed over to Louis Napoleon's old enemy. King Louis Philippe, while Louis Napoleon could only read about it in prison. On 25 May 1846, with the assistance of his doctor and other friends on the outside, he disguised himself as a laborer carrying lumber, and walked out of the prison. His enemies later derisively called him Badingay, the name of the laborer whose identity he had assumed. A carriage was waiting to take him to the coast and then by boat to England. A month after his escape, his father Louis died, making Louis Napoleon the clear heir to the Bonaparte dynasty. He returned to England, and quickly resumed his place in British society. He lived on King Street in St. James's, went to the theatre and hunted, renewed his acquaintance with Benjamin Disraeli, and met Charles Dickens. He went back to his studies at the British Museum. He had an affair with the actress Rachel, the most famous French actress of the period, during her tours to England. More important for his future career, he had an affair with the wealthy heiress Harriet Howard. They had met in 1846, soon after his return to England. 
they began to live together, she took in his two illegitimate children and raised them with her own son, and she provided financing for his political plans so that, when the moment came, he could return to France. Louis Napoleon's 1840 attempt to lead an uprising against Louis Philippe ended in fiasco and ridicule. He was sentenced to prison for life in the fortress of Ham in northern France. The room in the fortress of Ham where Louis Napoleon studied, wrote, and conducted scientific experiments. He later often referred to what he had learned at the University of Ham. After his escape from prison, he had a brief affair with Rachel, the most famous French actress of the time, during her London tours. He met the wealthy heiress Harriet Howard in 1846. She became his mistress and helped fund his return to France.